So I've talked about cognitive learning on this channel and the difference between memorizing a fact and understanding a concept effectively and efficiently. But how do you actually master something? How do you know when you're a master? And where do things like active recall fit into all this? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna talk about Bloom's taxonomy, which helps educators to develop critical learning skills and higher order cognitive abilities in their students, and how whether you're a teacher or a student, you can use the principles to master whatever you're learning or teaching. Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Alex. I'm a surgeon and the founder of a few ed tech companies. And on this channel, we talk about learning and human performance to help you live healthier, wealthier, happier, and more productive lives. Now, Bloom's Taxonomy is a high level teaching and studying strategy that I've touched on a bit before. And it's incredibly useful when it comes to learning anything or when revising for exams. It allows teachers and students to classify and organize learning objectives and it's based on cognitive learning and assumes that learning should be structured from easy to difficult in six logical steps. So I'm gonna to break today's video up into exactly what Bloom's taxonomy is and what each step means, and then I'll focus on how you can utilize the taxonomy to understand your stage of cognitive learning and take your learning to the next level. I'm also gonna to touch on how key learning techniques like active recall fit into Bloom's taxonomy, which is something that often confuses people. So make sure you stick around till the end of the video and do hit that subscribe button to get the latest learning and human performance content direct to your brain every Sunday. So let's get into things, starting off with what Bloom's Taxonomy actually is. Bloom's Taxonomy was first created in 1946 by American psychologist Benjamin Bloom and was later revised by Lauren Anderson to the version that we know today. It serves as the backbone of many teaching philosophies, in particular those geared towards teaching specific skills. Now a taxonomy is a way of classifying things and Bloom's taxonomy classifies thinking and learning into six cognitive levels of complexity. Each level usually comes with a clear learning objective that can be tested and learners and teachers can use the taxonomy to set learning objectives, align outcomes to master a concept, and having levels of learning classified helps us to understand whether we've actually attained that next level in a particular skill. So the taxonomy describes six different levels of cognitive learning in the form of a hierarchy. At its most basic level, the taxonomy describes the essential abilities needed to recall information that's been taught. While at the highest level, it describes a learner's ability to take what has been taught, analyze it, and use it to create and evaluate, effectively having mastered a skill or a topic. Now, while this all sounds helpful, critics of the taxonomy often question the existence of a sequential hierarchical link between each level and argue that levels might be better placed alongside each other but before we get into some deeper learning psychology arguments and where things like active recall fit into Bloom's taxonomy, let's look at each of the levels in turn. Remembering is knowing the facts, being able to recall information and the ability to describe what's been learned. It's recognizing and recalling and it's focused on factual knowledge. Remembering is really just rote memorization and recollection of facts without much understanding. For example, if you're learning a language, you might memorize a few new words without knowing their tenses or how to pronounce them. Or if you're learning a skill or new concept, you might learn a term but not know what it means or how to apply it. Once the basic facts are learned, we can move on to then understanding them. Understanding is then the ability to interpret this information that's been learned in order to present, summarize, or paraphrase it. We begin to decode the factual information and for example, when learning a language, we might understand deeper concepts around how words change based on their tense or pronoun. Or if we're learning something like anatomy in medical school, we can not only remember what the heart is, but we also understand that it's a pump that supports life by pumping blood around the body. In terms of knowledge, we begin to better understand the principles and classifications like language and grammar. Once we understand something, we can then apply the concepts that we've learned. Applying is about taking what's been learned and using it to solve a related problem or complete a specific task. Application is about implementing our knowledge and executing based on our ability to recall and understand something. Applying language skills might be writing a sentence or speaking in the language we're learning. Or if we're studying for an exam, this might be completing a simple test question based on the concepts learned previously. Next up in the hierarchy is analysis. Analyzing is a deeper level of understanding organizing, comparing, and deconstructing the relationship between different aspects of the material you're learning. This involves examining and breaking down information into components, determining how the parts relate to one another, and finding evidence to support any generalizations. 
If you're studying medicine, this might be identifying and comparing patient physiological signs to then diagnose that someone is in heart failure. Or if you're learning a language, this might be analyzing a more complex sentence and organizing response without any prompt. Evaluating is then the ability to judge the information and critique it to choose a specific course of action. In our medical example, after analyzing test results or a patient's observations, you might evaluate the best treatment options for that patient. Or for language learners, this might be choosing the correct response to a more complex sentence. Finally, at the top of the hierarchy, creating is about generating new ideas or ways of looking at things and inventing, constructing, producing, or designing new things. In simple terms, for any learner, this might simply be creating your own teaching materials or questions from your existing knowledge. For medical professionals, this might be undertaking research into something like heart failure to then define new treatment options that have yet to be discovered. And in languages, this might be developing your own shorthand phrases or just an ability to fluently and automatically respond in that language that you've learned. So now that we understand each of the six levels, let's look at how they can help you when you are learning. So if you're like most students, you'll memorize materials for exams, but by just memorizing, there's no real thinking behind it, so you're not really processing that information, and therefore you're only storing it in your short-term memory. And if you're asked an exam question where you need to actually apply your knowledge, you're going to struggle. Now, I've covered this in my previous videos on learning new content, and moving up Bloom's hierarchy is really about ensuring that you're using evidence-based learning techniques like active recall to not just memorize facts, but to also test yourself on your understanding of what you're learning by, for example, summarizing back a concept in your own words, and then applying that knowledge by actively doing practice questions of increasing difficulty, which test your ability to analyze information and also to evaluate it. When learning anything, you can ask yourself, what level am I at? And can I do practice exam questions or reply to a question in a language I'm learning by applying my knowledge? And can I do higher level things like actually evaluating the information and taking a specific course of action? All of this allows you to learn at an appropriate difficulty level and set learning objectives that increase your knowledge and ability in a skill or whatever you're learning. When learning or teaching, you should consider the depth of cognitive learning you need to achieve from a given subject or course. For example, if you're learning basic steps in a new skill or entry level topics from an exam, it's likely that remembering, understanding and applying the information provided is sufficient to get you to pass that exam, which focuses really on recalling key facts and how to apply them. If you're training to be a doctor or nurse and need to learn about leadership and making critical team-based decisions, the level of cognitive learning needed must be deeper. Important clinical decisions will require analysis, evaluative and creative skills that come later on and higher up in the taxonomy. To get to the top of the pyramid and effectively master a topic, teaching others and effectively creating your own teaching material is one of the best ways to learn as it forces you to go all the way through the taxonomy, form your own opinions and then teach others. By understanding your own level of ability against the taxonomy, or if you're a teacher understanding your student's ability, you can better set yourself learning goals and use active recall questions that are of an appropriate difficulty so as to move you to the next level. For example, rather than just using active recall to test yourself on medical facts, like what the valves of the heart are called, you might want to test yourself on the signs and symptoms of when these valves fail and why this happens in order to better understand heart failure and valve disease. Now, if you look back through any of the videos in the learning series, which I'll put up in the end cards, you can see that lots of these concepts like reading around a topic and summarizing take you to that next level of understanding beyond just memorizing facts with active recall and relating new information to existing concepts which you know already allows you to apply and analyze information, meaning that you'll likely be able to learn faster and retain that information for longer. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being a subscriber to the channel. Do hit subscribe if you haven't already done so and leave a comment below about your own ways of using Bloom's taxonomy and I'll catch you again in the next video.